Hey, what's up guys? Chris here from Security Bros, back with another video. And today I will take a closer look at the SASE 1080p Outdoor Auto Tracking Wi-Fi PTZ IP Security Camera. If you're on a budget or just don't want to spend a lot of money on a security camera, but still want an outdoor camera that can pan and tilt, then you might want to consider this camera. The camera does support auto tracking, but as with most of these budget cameras that I've tested, I don't see it very useful since it can only pan the camera when tracking, not tilt it. And it's way too slow to track a car for example, and when the camera moves it gets so blurry you can't really see any details. I should also mention that when I turned the camera on for the first time, I did experience some disconnection issues in the app, but after a reset everything worked just fine. Other than that, I think it performed well for a security camera that cost under $35. Yes, you heard it right, you can actually buy it for under $35 on AliExpress. It also sells on Amazon for $56, or if you buy a 2-pack for $86, which would bring it down to $43 per camera, which is really cheap. And for full transparency to you guys, they did send me this camera over for review, However, any opinions in this video is strictly my own based on my experiences testing this camera out. And if you're interested in buying one, you will find my affiliate links in the video description down below with the most updated prices. So the camera records in 1080p at 12 frames per second and it uses a 3.6mm lens. It can pan 355 degrees and tilt 90 degrees and it uses a 4x digital zoom. It uses an app called YCC365+, Plus, which is a cloud-based app, and to be honest I don't know why they are not using their own Saucy View app instead. Anyway, you can use the app without a cloud subscription and record either 24-7 or when motion is detected directly to the SD card and watch the recordings in playbacks, and you will get a push notification on your smart device when motion is detected. The only difference when not using a cloud subscription is you can't watch the alarm videos in the app. It does support two-way audio so you can talk and listen through the camera. It also have a siren that sounds like this. And the camera is made for outdoor use with an IP65 rating, which means it should be dustproof and be able to handle rain, but I would still place it under some kind of cover just to make sure it would last as long as possible. For night vision it uses four infrared lights as well as four white LEDs, so you can choose between full color night vision or regular IR night vision. You can set it to automatically turn on the white LEDs when motion is detected and they will stay on for a minute and then go back to normal black and white. It also supports OnViv so you should be able to use the camera with most brand NVRs that supports OnViv. And I connected a camera to OnViv device manager without a problem. And by default the camera doesn't use any username or password. I also connected a camera to iSpy using Unvif, and I will show you later on in the video on how to do that. Okay, so in the box we got the camera, power cable, quick start guide, cable protector, and a bag with screws. It's a really small and lightweight camera, and as expected the build quality is not the best. It's all made of cheap plastic. Here we got the lens, 4 infrared lights, 4 white LED lights, light sensor, and this is the microphone. On the back we got the speaker and to insert the micro SD card we need to open up this cover on the back. It supports up to 128GB micro SD card. And we got one cable for power, one for Ethernet and then the reset button. It's really easy to connect the camera to the app, so after you have downloaded the app from either Google Play Store or App Store and installed it, you are required to first create a new user account. When that's done and you have the app opened, Click on the plus icon to add a new camera, select intelligent camera and then choose adding by scanning code. Click next and add your Wi-Fi, then next and hold the QR code in front of the camera lens until you hear a beep and wait for it to connect. Might take a couple of minutes and that's it. In here we get the PTZ controls, set preset points and PTZ reset. In cloud event you will find alarm videos if using a cloud subscription. We can change the image quality, push to talk, 
turn on and off the sound, and if we click more we can record video, access cloud album, and turn on and off the white LED lights. Here we have the playbacks, we can take a snapshot and full screen. Up in the top right corner we got the settings menu, and in here we can for example turn on and off auto tracking, set motion detection sensitivity, and where you want motion detection to be activated. In device storage we can select if we want the camera to record 24-7 or only when motion is detected. Alright, let's have a look on how to connect the camera to iSpy using Onvif protocol. And for those who don't know what iSpy is, it's a free to use open source video surveillance software that will allow you to monitor and record with unlimited number of cameras. And it's compatible with most consumer IP cameras on the market. So here I got the software open, so what we need to do is click on add and then select on with camera. If your camera is connected it will show up here, so just select it and then click next. Here we got the mainstream and the substream, select the one you want to use and click ok. And that's it, now we should be connected. Here you can change most camera settings, and if we go to PTZ you can see that I can control the camera using the PTZ controls. Alright, let's have a look at some recordings. This is daytime and here I test how far away you can read a license plate. And this is at around 10 meters and I think that's about the maximum distance to be able to read a plate number. And here I test the camera's pan and tilt. Here I've set up preset points and I think it worked really good. And this is me testing the auto tracking. This is nighttime, but not in complete darkness, since I have a street light just across the street. And here I turn on the white LED lights for full color night vision. And here I've set night vision on auto, so when the camera detects motion it will turn the white LED lights on and they will stay on for a minute and then the camera will go back to normal infrared. This is me testing how long it takes to get the push notification when the camera detects motion. I've switched over to mobile data here as well.
Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on social media. See you next time.